Ongaku Concept. Hello and welcome to Ongaku Concept. Uh, this week I thought it'd be really fun to do a bit of transcribing because I haven't really done like a live transcription video on this channel before. So uh, this week we are going to be transcribing the uh, opening theme from the anime Shirobako, which is a uh, anime about making anime. Um, this we're just gonna make work on a uh, chord chart for it. Um, I think a uh, trying to do the melody and everything would uh, would just take a bit of time. And uh, I want to start with something real simple. So we're just gonna work on a chord chart. And I've still got some presets here from when I was doing a transcription of a Sonic song. Um, so the opening theme, we're gonna let's go let's go over here. We're gonna get all of our information from vgmdb.net. This is a wonderful website if you want to get any information on any video game or uh, anime albums. And it's taking its sweet time to load, so uh, I'll probably cut this out. Here we go, we got it to work. Uh, so here is the opening theme. Uh, it's called Colorful Box. Um, so let's just put that information in. Just colorful box in all caps. Um, I'm just going to put Shirabako OP. And I'll put TV size here because we're going to be working on the uh, short version. Composed by Kayoko, who, by the way, has worked on lots of stuff for Lisa. I'm sure many of you know her from Sword Art Online, among other anime. Um, but, uh... She is a, uh, very good composer. So, let's put that information in. Music by Kayoko. And I'm just gonna put... In the lyricist spot, I always put the transcriber, so I'm just gonna put my name. And, uh, put a link to the website here so people know where to find it. Alright, so I'm just going to choose instruments, or I guess I should have... We're just going to be doing a chord chart, so I'm just going to hit treble clef here. I've got the song loaded up in Riff Station, <clears throat> which will be very useful in helping us transcribe it. Um, Messy. I've got my guitar here to help me figure out some stuff. Okay. It's in the key of F major. So it's a uh, one flat. Also, I guess I might as well make the, get the tempo marking. Riff station is very nice because it finds out the uh, tempo for you. Let me just see if it's beating at the right speed. Because sometimes it can beat at like half speed or twice or whatever. So 161 sounds about right. So we'll go ahead and put the tempo there. This is all prep stuff, you know? Time signature. It's in 4-4 four, four time. We can just put C. I like that. I just like how it looks. It means the same thing. There is a uh, pickup measure. A pickup measure is uh, an incomplete bar at the uh, beginning of a song. Uh, usually, you, like, you've got a little fill or something, or, like, the start of a melody before the rest of the instruments come in or something like that. Um, and this has a pickup measure at the beginning. Yeah, that's uh, d d that's three eighth notes. So I'm just gonna do that, and I don't know how many measures this is. Thirty two should be a decent starting place. We can always add more later. Uh, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so we can see things. Cool. And just because I can, I'm oops, gonna make the text a little smaller. Because I like it that way. Cool. Move this over here. And I like to put a little bar line after a pickup measure. Um, just to uh, separate that from the proper like starting point of the song, I guess. Um, and uh, there's really no rules as to how you break up like how many bars are on a certain section here. 
um, are on a system. But uh, I like to go with uh, four per line as much as possible. Just because things are usually grouped in groups of like, of like four bars. So, now that that's all ready, time to actually start transcribing. So let's take a listen to this. We're just working with the chord chart today, so I'm just going to be putting chords above these blank bars. Um, chord charts are really nice. Like, uh, usually when you have studios doing opening themes like this, uh, they will use chord charts for their musicians because session players come in and uh, and need to record the uh, the instruments for um, the song. And um, if you're working with like a uh, a big string section that needs to be very coordinated and stuff, then yes, they'll go ahead and like write out um, like the specific notes and everything. But for instruments like the guitar or a bass or uh, drums, just basic stuff like that, um, you'll usually find that they're playing off of chord charts, which are just um, a chart just like this. It's it's just like blank staff paper with chord names written above the uh, staff. And you'll also see um, rhythm slashes, which is a type of uh, notation um, that just, uh, it just notates rhythm without saying anything about the notes. So what you'll have is you'll have a, a chart like this with uh, chord names above the uh, staff and uh, rhythm slashes so they know which beats to accent. Um, you'll have the time signature, the tempo, and the uh, key. And uh, they just play off of that. But we're just going to put one of those together today. And uh, I'm not going to worry about rhythm slashes at this point. Um, we're just focusing on getting the chords down. So, all that to say, let's get started. Alright, so that first chord there. It's in the key of F, and that sounds like the one chord. Yep, that's an F major chord. So I'm just going to put F right here. And next. That's C. And by the way, you can probably see down here the um, chord names being listed. Riff Station uh, tries to uh, figure out the chords um, being played and puts them down here. And some really simple stuff, really easy to hear stuff. Um, it does a decent job. Like, you can see the first two chords are correct, but... Um, it doesn't do very well with extensions, and anything quick, or the, with the arrangement split up really crazily, um, it's not going to do a very good job Good job on, so I just, I don't bother looking at this, and, you know, it's just not very useful, just use your ears, okay? So we start with an F chord, then we go to the C. Okay, so we have D minor. So, put down C here, D minor, A minor. This is starting to sound very much like a Paco Bell's Canon. If you've, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with that song. Uh, it's it's got a very um, iconic chord progression, and it starts out just like this, from one to five, six, three. And then a different, and then this is it, kind of straying from it at this point. One, two, three, four. Yeah, there's just G minor here, back to A minor here. Yeah, you might notice I just split up and added some rests here. Before the chords were playing like just one per bar, and now here we have one chord lasting for a half note, the G minor lasting for a quarter note, and the A minor lasting for a quarter note. So just to, um, get the chords uh, above the bar in like the approximate location, uh, I go ahead and, and split it up into rests and uh, um, add the chords above there. And then I just, uh, well, if I try and clear the bar, it clears my chord names too. It didn't used to do that in the older version of MuseScore, so I just copy an empty bar, paste it there, and it does the job. I'm working in uh, MuseScore 2.0, if you're wondering. It's the, uh, the, 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 full, the full 2.0 version that just got released um, a couple of weeks ago. And I'm loving it so far. I just kind of wish there, uh, it didn't uh, clear your chords when you try to clear a, uh, 
a bar like that. But anyway, <clears throat> on to the next part. Oh, that sounds nice. That sounds like a B flat minor. There might be something else added. Let me see. Sometimes you just want to, if you're unsure about a chord, you want to uh, just go ahead and uh, pick around on your instrument uh, and just listen for any notes you can find and just put it to get piece it together like that. I'm pretty sure this is a B flat minor, but I'm just, just checking to make sure there aren't any extra notes in there. Yeah, she's singing the third, the minor third of that chord. I don't hear any extra notes. I think it's just a straight up B flat minor. Yeah, but see, this is, an issue, uh, this is a situation where B, uh, riff station's automatic chord detection is incorrect. It says there's a B flat chord here. There's not. It's B flat minor. So don't really trust this. You know, don't 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 trust any automatic chord detection. Okay, you should use your ears, and that's what this is all about. We're transcribing. So, uh, we have B flat minor, three, four, two. And, uh, and this is a case where I don't split it up into like four bars. I'm just gonna, I messed myself up by adding so many. I'll just, uh, do that. And, uh, because there's a new section that starts, and I like to have new sections start on new systems here. So I'll just go ahead and put a little a little uh, double line there to uh, mark the beginning of a new section because the uh, intro, like the first part of the intro is done and it goes on to a new, like the second part of the intro. Uh, this, uh, this C chord, by the way, for a little bit of theory for you, the C is the um, five chord of the key of F, and it's a good place to... Um, to end the section on like when you're building up to something something else. So good chances that this is gonna resolve to F at the beginning of uh, of bar seven here. All right, so back to this, on to the next section of the intro. Sounds like a uh, flat six, flat seven situation. Yeah. Now there we have, um, if you hear like the little, uh, that thing, um, it's just alternating between F, F, uh, sus4, and F, but, um, it's just kind of like a little, uh, it's so fast and it's just kind of like a little embellishment to the chord. I don't really think it's necessary to write down. Um, so I'll just put F here. And, uh... One, two, da, 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 da. Okay. So this bar ends with a uh, D flat. Uh, that's why I didn't want to do that. E flat right there. I really have to get my uh, keyboard shortcuts figured out so I can do this faster. Yeah, and that part gets repeated. This time F doesn't play at the end of the bar, it waits until the beginning of the next bar to do it. I'll put a little another another little uh, double line there because we're starting the verse now. Yay, intro done. Alright, let's scroll this up a little bit. Oh, not quite far enough. Roof station scrolling is a little weird. Go 
That uh, first chord is F. Uh, the next chord is the four chord. I think I hear the ninth. Oh, of course, she's singing it. Duh. That's why I thought I heard it. You, uh, you have to be careful about trying to add every single note that's going on at the time into the chord name. Um, if you get too analytical about it, you can really come up with a lot of really weird chord names and stuff. Um, so you gotta be always looking at the bigger picture, and you gotta think, okay, what's the main idea being expressed here? Is that D minor 7? I don't hear the C. Okay. Here's C, and here's D minor. Yeah, it's just D minor. Just listening for that 7th. Sometimes minor 7ths are a little bit difficult to hear for me. So that repeats. I don't really need to do that. I can just put a little repeat thing right here. Even though the rhythm changes and stuff, uh, the chords don't, and uh, so I'm just going to put that here. It's a two chord. Or, I'm sorry, it's a... Uh... Oh, that's... That's the one. Yeah, see, uh, Riff Station has this listed as an A minor chord because A is very prominently in the bass. Um, but it's actually F over A. This is F, an F chord in uh, first inversion. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so here we have F over A. Then B flat add nine. And then what was next? Just C. This is an A seven, unlike the. Uh, um, A minor that Riff Station was suggesting. This is an A7 chord. That's nice. It's a secondary dominant. In this case, it's the uh, 5 of 6. Um, very, very common. Uh, especially in, in, in J-pop like this. And you can bet it's gonna head to D minor. Which it does. So here's D minor. Yeah, and then we have this, this next chord is also another secondary dominant. It's a G7, which uh, will probably head, uh, if it doesn't head to C, it'll probably head to um, G minor or B flat, which it does. Hold on. Uh, let me write down, or let, me, let me write down what we have here. D minor, G7. I want to check the bass on this. It sounds like G, but I'm not entirely sure. So I'm going to use Rift Station and uh, bring this up an octave. Yeah, that's a 251 right there. That's why I heard some uh, complexity to this chord. Even the Rift Station is suggesting a B-flat, and I should probably stop looking at Rift Station suggestions. Um, this, uh, there's G on the bass, so we have a G minor 7. It's our first 7 chord outside of, like, this dominant 7th right here, and this dominant 7th, but it's our first minor 7th chord here. That's nice. 
It sounds really good. Uh, and then we have, what, we have C? Yeah, let's... Yeah, just making sure. See? I, uh... I'm too careful with things. <laughs> Alright, so we have F. Awesome. And then we go into a uh, new section, so we're gonna put another double line there. So just looking at what we've got here. Oopsie, I uh, didn't notice that. Right. Awesome. This is a, uh, a bit of a uh, variation on a very common chord progression in Japanese pop music. Um, Japanese music in general. Um, this is a variation on the uh, four, five, three, six progression, which I've done a video on. Um, in this case, we start on the four chord. We have B flat major seven. Gives it that kind of dreamy sound. The background vocals help. And then that piano rolls down to the uh, the um, flat three. Hmm. Nice. That, my friends, here. Actually, it's one per bar, isn't it? So we start on this B flat major seven. That next chord is a B flat minor major seven, which is a B flat minor chord with a major seventh added. So we have B flat minor, which is um, B flat D and F with A. Sounds very, very nice. You might recognize it as the James Bond chord. So this is a B flat minor major seven chord. How nice is that? It's taking place at the five chord here. I love it. We have an A minor seven. You hear that G, that, that seventh way up top. Da, da, A minor seven. And uh, split this up into half notes here. D seven sus four. D minor seven. I could call this D minor 7 sus4, but because sus chords don't have a third to make it major or minor anyway, it really doesn't matter. Um, sometimes you want to go ahead and add it in there just to make things extra clear, because some musicians like to add the thirds in these chords anyway, and uh, it's a, uh, you know, but I'm not going to. It doesn't matter. B7 sus4, D minor 7. Cool. I really like this. I really like this part. This pre-chorus. It's a. I don't see minor major seven chords often, so that's a very nice thing to to hear. So let's see what comes after that. Okay, I hear two, one in uh, first inversion. Um, minor four. And then five. Let's see. I just scrolled back way too far. I'm just gonna blame Rift Station for that. I don't. I don't really know. Oh, she's singing the ninth. I love it. That's a really pretty sound. I barely noticed the, the, the four there. Okay, cool. So we have um, G minor seven, F over A, B flat minor, do, 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 do. 
we have uh, C, sus4, and C. Awesome, we're almost there. We just have the chorus. Because we're working with a TV size version. I'll move this CSS4 back to the uh, beginning of, uh, or the end of this bar. Or, I'm sorry, that wasn't the chord that was doing that. That was, uh... This one. Double check and make sure. Yeah, all right, cool. All right, so this first first bit here is exactly the same as the intro, so we'll just, or almost exactly the same. We don't have the G minor A minor thing going. Um, hey, I guess we're moving to a new page, aren't we? And actually, that's the end of my bars, so let me go ahead and uh, add some more. I'll just add, like, 16. Just add another uh, double line there. So we add F, C, D minor, A minor. I'll enter a new page now. A very common um, thing in Japanese music to go from the uh, three to the six. Yeah, sweet. So B flat, B four. Actually, that, that uh, ended right here, didn't it? A minor seven. D minor seven. Um, yeah, if you if you hear like a three to four movement, I'm sorry, three to uh, six movement there. So remember, we're in the key of um, F, so A minor seven is the three chord, D minor seven is the six chord. If you hear a three to six movement like that, um, they're probably seventh chords. They sound a little bit lighter than uh, than um, standard minor chords. So, uh, and you can see here, like most of these chords. Uh, I haven't gone and like tried to figure out every note that's being played. I just recognize them by their sound. Um, it's a really important thing to be able to do. And because uh, basically I'm not hearing these chords in my head as like B flat, A minor seven, D minor seven. What I'm hearing is four, three minor seven, six minor seven. It's all relative to the key and, uh, and if you try and think of these chords as like, okay, well, this is a B-flat chord, um, you're not going to get anywhere, because B a B-flat chord doesn't sound like anything. I mean, it just, it's a major chord, but you ha yeah, and you have to put it in context. So in this case, it's, it's the uh, four chord, and it has a very specific sound. The four chord will always sound like the four chord, whereas a B-flat doesn't mean anything. It can sound different in different contexts. I did a video on that uh, a while back, um, and, uh, just thinking in relative to the scale, relative to the key is, um, is really important for ear training. So moving on, I heard some really cool stuff happening right after that. I'm going to try and, uh, scroll ahead a little bit. Yeah, it's one of my favorite cadences. Just checking for a sus chord there. So we have a, a flat 7 major 7 to 5 movement. So we have this uh, D major 7 going up to E flat major 7. And then down to C. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's cool. 
kind of singing the uh, sharp 11 over that. I'm trying to see if I hear the seven because I'm pretty sure I did. Not working with the best quality audio file. I don't think I hear the seventh. Never mind. I'll just make it E flat and just see. I did a video uh, just a couple weeks ago on on that idea. Um. All right. Next. Oh, it's nice. Backing vocals, adding uh, some extensions there. Yeah, that's the seven right there. Got the sixth over that C chord. And then the major seventh over the B flat. And then the... All right, so I'll get those those four chords in. D minor seven, C six, because we've got that A up on top. Uh, B flat major seven and uh, A minor seven. Next. <clears throat> Yeah. I hear the ninth there. Yeah, it has a really warm sound. I like it. Um, all right, so uh, B flat add nine here. We have that same thing. Actually, I'll just copy that. Add the ninth here. That was nice. A7 and uh, probably A7 over C sharp. Or maybe a. Uh, yeah. Alright, so what we have here is G minor 7. Followed by A7 and uh, C sharp diminished 7. Which basically C sharp diminished 7 is the same thing as A7 flat 9 in first inversion. We're just dropping the uh, the root out of the chord. Um, that's really cool. I like that. It's probably going to lead into D minor. Just like, you know, C sharp diminished 7 is a, uh, a rootless uh, A7 flat 9, so we're, uh, as a secondary dominant, we're probably going to lead in the D minor or D minor 7. Uh, how do I add measures? I forgot. Okay. Just add a few. That's probably a lot more than I need, but you know, that is okay. I hope this hasn't been taking too long. I've been talking a lot about the process rather than transcribing. Um, but hopefully you guys are uh, are learning something from this. I really wanted to kind of explain in depth what I'm doing, what I'm thinking about while I'm transcribing. Um, all right, so that chord progression has a very distinct sound. Um, I believe it is the same as a, a certain chord progression I did a video on back in December. Um, so let me see if I can Figure this, if I can guess this. Of course, this is D minor. I, rec I recognize the sixth chord. And uh, that makes sense, going from C sharp diminished 7 to a D minor. Next, I would assume to be a C sharp augmented chord. Or D flat augmented. I'm going to say C sharp augmented because of theory reasons. Let me see. See if that fits. Oopsie. There we go. Whoa, I zoomed out on my trackpad, I guess. Back over here. 
Yeah, that's uh, C sharp augmented. Hmm. Uh, flat five gets added in there. Hmm. And sometimes you'll come upon situations like this where, uh, you gotta think about it for a second. Because, essentially, this is acting like an A7 in third inversion. But, um, I want to name the chord accurately, you know? Uh, normally in this chord pattern, you would see a, uh, C-sharp augmented chord, but I'm hearing the flat five. Let's see what the bass is doing. Yeah, it's just... Alright, so because the uh, vocalist is singing that A right over there, and it's being played by the piano, I would say I, I want to name this chord... Um, based on A7, rather than dropping it from the from the title. Because I think that A is really kind of being pushed a little more. Um, of course, it's augmented. So if we were to take like a, a C-sharp um, augmented chord and uh, put A in the bass, we have a A7 sharp five. All right, that took me too long to figure out. <laughs> I'm gonna go with that. Uh, I guess I should put C-sharp there. A7 sharp 5 over C sharp. Cool. That's nice. And of course, this is F in a second inversion. And then we probably have G7 over B. Chord. That sounds a little too dissonant. I think it's probably B minor seven flat five. Yeah. All right, cool. So with that, go into uh, F over C, and then um, B minor seven flat five. Which is like a uh, a C nine chord. Um, I'm sorry, a G nine in a uh, just dropping the root. Um, all right, cool. That took far too long to figure out. We have D minor. I can't even play it right. That's awesome. All right, so just, this could be C-sharp augmented. That might be a better way to write it, but because A is kind of being stressed so much, I want to, I wanted to uh, write it down based on the, um, based on the A chord. So I feel like something's a little dissonant about that. Um, usually if, if, if there's a two chord, and it's kind of dissonant like that. If it's a bright sound, I assume G7. Or, like, in this case, it's G, this is the two chord. If it was a brighter sound, I would assume G7. Because it's so dark like this. I'm gonna think, uh, minor, G minor 7 flat 5. Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. And we have C sus4. C. Ending on F. I'm going to delete these extra measures we don't need. So that's it. We did it.
there's our chord chart. And uh, just to make things a little neater, we could uh, fill with slashes. Did I mess something up? This doesn't look good. This doesn't look good. Okay, we're back. We're gonna try that again. This time, instead of fill with slashes, I'm just gonna do toggle rhythmic slash notation. That was a bad idea. It didn't do anything. Okay, you know what? We don't need to fill this with slashes. It doesn't matter. So here we are. This is a uh, finished chord chart for Colorful Box, the opening theme for Shirabako. Um, there's a lot of really cool ideas going on here. Um, I would encourage you to, uh, I'm gonna have this PDF up on the website at ongakuconcept.com, and I would, uh, encourage you to go over it and, uh, and try studying it on your own and, and listening for those chords. Um, I think this would be good practice if you wanted to, um, to practice, uh, hearing chords relative to the key. So you start thinking about, instead of thinking of this as F, C, D minor, A minor, Think of it as one, five, six, three, and uh, you will start to hear the chords relative to the key, and that's going to be super important for your ear training, and it's very, very useful. Um, so I hope you enjoyed uh, just seeing how I transcribe, how I do chord charts and stuff, and how I go about finding that kind of stuff, and, and what I think about um, while I'm working. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, there will be a uh, link in the description to where you can find the uh, PDF of this uh, chart. And uh, I will see you guys next week.